Right, this part of the pod is brought to you by Movember. Uh, yes, it's that time of year again. I'm actually looking forward to it. You know, I think Movember is a fantastic cause. And also, I think you look quite hot with the muzzy. I, do you know, like, I'm quite pleased that Ab, you know, because it's, it's, it's obviously it's a campaign that we, uh, with the podcast and, you know, a football podcast and me personally have supported at Stoke City, we used to do it as well. We did Broder a photo shoot together we for it. We did do a photo shoot And I together. had a tash. We shot with Greg Williams, who's one of our friends and one of the most incredible photographers. And we did this incredible shoot where we were walking around London in these gorgeous outfits and I had a tash on too. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great cause. Uh, and also it's a lot of fun. Like we... We've I've had a lot of fun over the years growing Natash, but bizarrely, like all the lads that do it, their missus is like, oh, I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> I hate his tash. But Ab quite quite digs it. Shall we leave it on, Pete? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit um Viking ish. Is it? So yeah, I'm going I'm definitely doing it this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's so many icons with mustaches. Look at, you know, Freddie Mercury, mm. Tom Selleck. Hulk Hogan. Tom Selleck's is strong, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Proper. Strong Tash. I don't think I've quite got that. Yours is a good effort. It's a good effort. Your facial hair is a, a little bit sparse in places. Well, I don't get it here. It's just, it's just a goatee, isn't but it? You're, you're... But I'll just get rid of all this. I'm going straight, straight Tash mm. this year. And for a great cause, let's be honest, you know? They, so they you... tackle lots of issues. Yeah, what are you going to go... What style are you going to go for then? Uh... Well, your your best friend Jules, he did the whole curled up at the end one. That takes a lot of time. Mm. I I think you should go kind of. I don't want you to go gimmicky with your tash, because I know you want to. I think you probably want to go for the more you know the fun factor and to make everyone laugh. But I think you should go for like a hot eighties icon vibe. <sighs> you know, like Tom Selleck esque. Well, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my very best. Mm. Hot 80s icon I'm going for this year. Mm. November, although it's a bit of fun, you know, it cr creates so much awareness around such important male issues, you know, like mm. suicide prevention, testicular cancer. Mm. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, mental health. Mental health. You know, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible cause. And, you know, there is a taboo surrounding men that they can't open up and they can't talk. And I think... You know, this is having the big bushy tash is one way to break the ice. <laughs> it certainly is. And if you're helping those, raising awareness of those causes, it's always going to be a good thing. Definitely. Now, I want to get some comments from the women. Do they like the tash? Do they detest the tash? You know, and let, let's see some of these efforts. So if you want to get involved, you can download the app. You can sign up on Movember.com and help change the face of men's health. Yes, the moustache is calling. Come together, grow together, raise funds and save lives. Right, back to the pod. Mm. I could be your Lorenzo if you want me to be. I remember when I used to be a midnight snack. Now you prefer a pot noodle. We Not stop. a sprint. It's a, it's a race. race. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. And me, uh, P Peter Crouch. So just a quick pub date. The dog's been rehomed because it's spilt Ribena around my rug. I no, did I'm love joking. the ending of the last pod. No, I just want to apologise to everyone for my abrupt ending last week because, you know, we all know I'm a bit of a clean freak and a bit OCD and a bit mental in that way. Um, and just as we were about to end our podcast, I put the puppy down on the floor and he knocked the glass over and the rug is still can't be wet. And, you know, I didn't realise that until I used my carpet cleaner and the vanish spray and completely destroyed the rug. I, I'm actually glad that this happened on your side. If if I'd have put the dog down and it knocked over my glass, would you have reacted in the same way? Yeah. Would you have called me names? I, I would have blamed you more, yes. Yeah. But it was totally my responsibility. And But, you know, you don't care if the rug's ruined anyway. No, it actually, actually really ruined my day. <laughs> Why? That, that was, I loved that rug. <laughs> yeah, but the, for a bit of context, I've got like a a huge off-white silk rug and it's covered by, you know, a... A tapestry, I think you called it. Last from time. an actual monastery? Was it a monastery? It's a tapestry from a, a palace in Versailles. Oh, yeah. So it's... Is it really? Yeah. What should it cost? Well, never you mind. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Sounds fucking expensive. <laughs> it is. 
you know, it's a bit of history in the house. And, you know, having done my home show, you know, going around people's houses, which is obviously out this week on ITV. Um, (laughs) Plug. I know. But, you know, I'm proud of it. You know, everyone loves looking around people's houses. Mm. And, you know, some of the houses, you know, some of them just love interior design and like things to be nice. But a lot of the houses I went in, especially like Linda Plant. You know, from The Apprentice. Mm. She's like a hugely successful businesswoman. Incredible, incredible story. And But she's really obsessed with mid-century furniture and every single item in her home was deliberate and planned and thought about. You know, she does all these searches all over the world for certain pieces that she wants. Mm. And I, I think that's what makes a home, you know, because everything in there told a story and had a bit of history behind it. So... Obviously, introducing a bit of those elements into our own home, which, which you know, I, lo- I love my old, mm-hmm. old beautiful pieces. Um, well, like I, well, I've lived in this house for probably seven, eight years, though, and um, and I didn't know we had a tapestry from Versailles on the floor. Those just, mirrors until, are from Versailles as well? Until just now. Fuck, no wonder we don't come in here. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's our museum. But I, I actually, I feel like I'm getting a bit of an unfair reputation on this oh, yeah. podcast because you're always highlighting my likes in a negative way. Are we? You know, you're you're like proper into your golf. You know, it can affect your mood. You're excited to play. You're excited to explore different co- courses all around the world. But I want to bring a bloody mirror in from Versailles and you kick off. No, I haven't kicked well, off. Like I say, I, I just didn't even know. Like I didn't kick off. I kicked, like I mentioned it eight years later. I know, but it's it's you know it's it's just what I'm into. It's That's what fine. I like. Yeah, I, 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 I like it. So I like we, them. I just didn't make, know they were from. Can we make a pact to stop ridiculing me on this? Yeah, I just didn't. Know, I didn't have a clue. You know this this cushion, for instance, as well. It's lovely. It's really nice. It is. Wait, How have we you look felt? a bit messy on this couch today. Nah, you look alright. No worse than usual. <laughs> What what has your week been? Yeah, it's been good. Busy, like stuff going on. Busy. Yeah, all good. How's the dog settling in? Obviously, like last week was an abrupt ending with the uh, with the carpet. The dog is it healed? Is the, the carpet? Rug here? No. 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 Another trip to Versailles, is it? No, the, the, the tapestry is okay, <laughs> but you know that's hundreds and hundreds of years old, so you know that can withstand the test of time. But mm. the rug is silk and can't be wet so it's kind of the fibers are fused together so it will need to be either hidden or replaced oh god hidden sounded like a good option right yeah, now in yeah, a peak yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was like what she said before like she wanted this incredible present for christmas she said if you don't get me that don't get me anything i said i'll go with the nothing option <laughs> if you give me the nothing option i'll take that yeah. one you've actually told me what you've started dropping hints for christmas yeah. Golf gear. Yeah, I'd like some attire, yeah. Attire. Mm. Mm. I'd like that. Well, what style are you going for? Because, you know, back in the day when you first started, you like the heavily branded golf stuff with the kind of jazzy pants. A little bit jazzy. A little bit jazzy. <laughs> I think I've mellowed Okay. Um, as I've got older. So C- what, classic. What kind of colour palette are you going for? Well, I like I like kind of maybe some pastels. Pastels? Um, <laughs> But like not 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 just some dark pastels. Some pastels. So like mint green, lemon, baby pink. Mm, yeah, peach. but maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick with the word pastel. <laughs> you mean um, neutrals? Yeah, I, I think yeah. I mean, I've, I've very. So I like often, you in navies, oh, oh, baby well, blue, navy. white, beige. Yeah. I need some shorts as well, if the, you know, because baby they, don't need shorts. It's you know we're no, but mid October. I just, I just need shorts anyway. In general, my short game this year was abysmal. If I hadn't bought those Gucci's, <laughs> I'd have been, I'd have been laughed at. Because my short, the, the shorts these days seem to be short, too short. Mm. Like too short. Some lads are wearing short shorts, and I'm like, well, that. Yeah, but that's for the kind no of beefcake, isn't it? That's for the beefcake. Yeah. You know they but, like to show off well, the thighs. Saying, it's not for me, is it? No. It's not my game. You need more like a cargo short or something, do you, piece? A bit, yeah. I'm just she a, needs I'm, like a I'm, pedal pusher. I'm just above the knee. 32 inside leg, just just, just above the knee. Yeah. 32 inside leg, you're 38 My and a half. My shorts are, talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what do you want? Are you talking about lounging around the house shorts? No, I'm look, I'm talking about kind of smart, tailored shorts. It's, it's mid-October. 
Where are you wearing shorts? Got a little surprise for you, haven't I? Joey. Uh, no if November this is time. A, if this is a surprise, <laughs> surprise you kept talking about last time. No, I'm going to take, take you away. Decided. Booked it. You're going to have the time of your life. <laughs> He's full of empty promises, this guy. No, I was It was Julia. It was Sicily, you know, all over summer. We haven't even, in the whole of the summer, we haven't even been on one day together. The only thing we did together was the M&S Christmas food tasting night. You know, and we were in different directions because, you know, I've got a sweet tooth and Pete hasn't. So we weren't even basically together that night. What a lovely evening, Noe. Yeah. Um, I, and and I, I, I'm trying to, to fit in more more dates and things, you know? It's, it's, it's hard to get everything fucking minded, isn't it? <laughs> it is 10 years, to be fair, as yeah. we discussed last week. Mm. Ridiculous, isn't it, really? A couple that play together, stay together. Mm. Yeah, agreed. That's what you've got to remember. Agreed. What should we do? How's your week being, Pete? <laughs> enough of Abby. Yeah, enough about me. <laughs> enough about you. Uh, my week's been, it's been, been all right, actually. Yeah, I've been... You've been a bit daddy daycare Yeah, I've been you? a bit kind of stay-at-home dad. I've had the dinner on the table, you know, the homework Bullshit. done. Uh, I have. <laughs> dinner, two times. KFC. You went to KFC? Once we went to Liberty KFC. Liberty told me you went to KFC. Yeah, once. And then a pot noodle does not, is not suffice for a dinner, Pete. That, that, uh, that's not true. That's, <laughs> they don't do pot noodles. It's cocoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's my little midnight snack, that. We'll get into that. We'll talk about I remember gil- when I guilty used to be pleasures mi- I remember, today. I remember when I used to be a midnight snack. Now you prefer a pot noodle. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? If I woke you up in the middle of the night, you'd go, oh, fuck off. If you woke me up in the middle of the night, I'd punch you in the face. Exactly, exactly. absolutely no. I need my sleep, though. Doesn't everyone, though? You know people that say that, they always go, yeah, but I need my sleep. You go, no, you're just being lazy. That you, Everyone needs their sleep. Babe. It's not... Please don't tell me that I'm lazy. No, but you know when people go, yeah, yeah, but, you know... No, what I, I mean, got up at 11 to yeah, but I need my sleep, don't when I? Have, when <laughs> like, that's I, not an excuse. Can I just say, in nearly 40 <laughs> years of being on this earth, I have never... Woke up at eleven p.m. At eleven, a. M. sorry, eleven a.m. Ever, we're at seven. A, a lie-in for us is half seven, and that's the truth. But what I'm saying is, you can function on less sleep than I can. You know, I don't do well with. I think personally, it's mind over matter. I think it's you. You, you, you people say that just don't want to get don't out even of bed. say that. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it to you. I'm not saying it to you. I don't think you're like that. I just think there are people in general who go, yeah, but I need my sleep, you know. I don't function well without sleep. I, don't, I generally don't. Oh, so, you yeah. make me tired. <laughs> that is, like, I think that is an excuse. You know, personally. do you know Jared Leto? Mm. You know, he's like 54. Is he, yeah? And he looks incredible. And he does this whole no sugar, no alcohol, you know, nothing inflammatory in his diet. Eats well, but and he, he guarantees eight hours sleep a night. Eight hours. We did a whole sleep thing when I was playing football, and it was uh, you need you need eight hours. Mm. You, you know, uninterrupted sleep. It's important, and it's so much. It it just there's so many kind of factors as to why. Mm. But your body so can't repair, form. and you kind of. I was reading this thing about sleep the other day, and your kind of mind resets in a certain time, and if you if you have less than eight hours, it doesn't kind of filter itself, and you. Your cells can't repair mm. and all of this stuff. It's it's so important. But I find like I'm tired at like four o'clock, mm. and then you're desperate to get into bed. And then when you get into bed, I can't sleep. Wow. Oh, we, we had this sleep trainer at football, and he also said that like 15 minutes kind of Power in up. the middle of the day is like the equivalent of like three hours almost. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's so if you can get it, it's. It's so beneficial. The thing is, you need to just nod off, don't you? As soon as you think about like having a nap and you go, oh, I'm going to get me blanket and sit on the couch and think. No, you can't like sleep. That, Watch like, the telly and all yeah, that. Yeah, you just need to be on the couch and just go like that, don't you? Mm. Yeah, it's really and beneficial. And we've just got these amazing things for the kids. Um, Because, you know, sometimes it's like hard getting all the kids to bed and then, you know, giving the iPad for like five minutes, homework's done, dinner's at, mm-hmm. bath, into bed give them the iPad. We've got these little thing called Yoto. I think they're called like Yoto machines. What's yeah. that? I had to download, I had to download the app. these like little, kind of like Good. little little boxes and a Yoto player. So it's a little box and you insert cards in them and there's all loads of stories. So there's a Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, Winnie the Pooh stories, all Roll Doll stories, 
There was a thing on Mbappe, which I didn't listen to. <laughs> and then um, came with these headphones as well. So I, I just put it next to the bed and the boys went to sleep listening to this story. And I think that's incredible just for your language to relax mm, you. Mm. And like the kids are so excited the next day going to bed saying we want to finish a story. But in one of the things, we Liv was sitting there with the um, headphones on, like dancing. I'm like, what are you listening to? And she went, Queen. <laughs> She's listened to Queen's greatest hits. <laughs> Great. Or a ledge. <laughs> Good taste. Yeah, yeah. But do you know what? I, I think they're the best things we've invested in mm, lately. That, they're good. They're good because it's like, it's like, it's that trying to get the kid off the iPad yeah. game and you just do anything to try and do There's it. There's nothing better than a lovely story to go mm. to, to bed with, isn't it? Like, I used obviously, to love the we famous just, five. Yeah. Class, don't really. Mm. Yeah, like I suppose the, like it's the audio book kind of thing now, isn't it? Mm. I, I do like that. I think it's I think it's great. Mm. It's nice to visualise, and and also you fall asleep much quicker. I think it's calm, and it, I think it kind of sets the tone to go asleep. So yeah, really happy with them. Yeah, whereas we 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 seem to just put on Netflix or Amazon and just watch people getting murdered. I don't. <laughs> you do. I don't like that. Lots of people do that. We did it last night. That's an amazing new series on um, ITV. With Jenna Coleman in? No, it's called The Long Shadow or something. Mm. I thought it was about me at one stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we turned it on. It was about a, a, a girl from Leeds who got murdered. Oh, yeah. And left four kids behind. <laughs> and she was a... a prostitute it's called the long shadow mm -hmm. and it you know it, it was amazing mm. well yeah, really it's good. dark but amazing the, the only problem is is like well we get you get used to just going straight should we watch through. another one yeah should we watch just, another should one? Do five minutes let's do five minutes that's your favorite shout just, let's do little, little oh, she turn it off we gotta get up early tomorrow she's like we'll just do five minutes <laughs> Do you, yes, do you so fall that. asleep with it on and then wake up in the middle of the night? Like she does. Days? No, I no, fall no. I fall asleep to the TV and then Pete turns it off. No. Oh. Generally. So we um we had a photo shoot together, which we don't normally do, obviously with the book coming out this mm -hmm. week. Um, we had to do a lot of press for it. Um, and even because we do this together, but we don't really do any work stuff together, do we? We try not to. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but your photo shoots are your game, aren't they? And I, I don't feel, I'm kind of out of my comfort zone doing that. I'm like, Pete, open your eyes. Like Pete's face is... <laughs> <laughs> he does that. and I'm like open your eyes on every picture but it's it's. did you find that difficult or yeah yeah I thought your pictures on your own were phenomenal yeah they were actually quite nice they turned out nice mm. but I, 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 did, I don't particularly enjoy that no mm. I feel like a bit of a twat if I'm honest mm. what was the brief for the shoes there's a few pictures that were like Brad and Angelina and like it's hilarious when the references like, oh, are like John and Yoko I can't, I can't Brad like and Ange and then us two <laughs> pair of twerps twin twats twin twats <laughs> yeah but you you're a model do you know what I mean you're you look good yeah, but it's so annoying because like they were, when we were like going through the pictures and there's like an amazing one of me and Pete's got his eyes like that and then and when Pete looks amazing I'm like that so you can never kind of it was hard to capture us both but I kind of like the more off guard pictures, mm. you know, candid, candid, caught in the moment. But you know, it was good. It's not yeah. a nice day at the office together. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to do. And we got those pictures. Like I said, I'll, can you send me them? Because I'll put them on my, like my little screensaver. And that. I haven't been your sc screensaver for a while. Uh, yeah, you have. I think I think you're on there quite a lot. There you go. Look at that. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> That's um, nice. It's a nice one, isn't it? Mm. But it, the kids have done that one where you keep changing, you know, you keep changing. Oh, yeah, how like do you that. do that? I don't know, I did, obviously not. I want to so, do that on mine. Yeah, it's quite good because you get different, the thing is you don't, you forget that you've, it's your phone because you have a different, it's a different screensaver every time. I'm like, who's that there? Who's phone's that? <laughs> it's a bit annoying. Surely that's not my wife. <laughs> how did I bag that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, that's You're, a nice one, isn't it? Mm, I love that portrait of you. It's like my favourite. The two favourite pictures of Pete, of, of mine, are one of them when he played for England. So what up. year was that, 2010? No, God, that was, I think that went, must have been, yeah, it must have been about 2009, 2010. I think it was 2009, actually. Mm. And it's just my favourite picture ever of him. And then that one that's in the National Portrait Gallery. Mm. Gallery. 
Yeah, the National Portrait Gallery, believe it or not. Go away. Yeah, it's a weird one. It's like, it wasn't like a mad photo shoot. It was just one picture that they took. Like, it was almost before training, but... but it just caught a... something so special. I just love it was that a weird, It was a weird one. It went in the National Portrait Gallery. I remember my mum going up there and taking a picture of it. It was... I want. Oh. I really want Bradley Theodore to recreate that for us. I was going to get you that made. Really? Yeah. I saw David Yarrow. Like, we've got David Yarrow, haven't we? He took, takes the pictures of the animals. Mm. He did a picture of Erling Haaland. Oh, yeah, saw that. And he was in Viking in the water. Mm. It? Saw it. Right Incredible. up the rally. <laughs> um, <laughs> look good, look good, though. He's yeah. not... Your type. No. He's not the right kind of Viking. No. Mm. Am I the right type of Viking? Yeah, you are. I think you should get, go for it as a Viking for Halloween. <laughs> are you birthday cake? Get that what birthday cake? It's birthday cake, don't remember? No? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Viking birthday cake? Yeah. So, so I actually think you're really photogenic, to be honest. Was... I love those pictures of you where you're like just looking off and... I think you don't give yourself enough credit because I know you feel really uncomfortable. But when you take me to work with you on some of the things that you do, <laughs> and I have to do it, my I'm, my job now basically entails dicking around. Um, and yeah, but you you're good at that. I am a dick. You know? <laughs> you're, not, you're not a dick, but you're you're like funny, and you can take the piss out of yourself. Where I literally want to drop dead. Mm. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I, I think they don't, like for that, I find that really easy because it's just like that I think everyone you're, takes themselves you're, you're, too seriously. You're the kind of person where you're like, right, I'm just going to get there, get in there, and and give it my do all. Do it. Where? Because I, I, what I found is that when you do these things, and sometimes you feel a bit uncomfortable. Like the more you feel uncomfortable, the more the uncomfortable it is. You best just going for it. Yeah, but I was like that. On, I was like that on strictly. Like even though I won, we've talked about it before. Like I still want to like oh do your best. No, I still want, I'm still so furious with myself for letting nerves take over. You know, I, I did win it, but I could have done it 10 times better mm. if nerves didn't hold me back. Whereas you are so good at, you know, holding a room. Thanks. For some reason. But then you have had quite a lot of practice. Yeah. You know, yeah. playing football in, in front of like 60,000 people a week. Yeah. Like but that, you still get, I still, still get nervous with lots of things that I do. But um, I've been able to kind of, kind of cope cope with it, and I, I suppose the football over the years has helped me. Mm. Mm. Right, should we get into the weekly wines? Yeah, um, yeah. My my weekly wine uh, this week kind of involves a bit of last week, and it, it's about it's about the rug. Um, you know the amount I've heard about it this week. You know you've you're talking to people, getting advice. Um, you're talking about replacement rugs. Uh, you know, you've bought a new carpet cleaner, a new a new Hoover, as if we need another one. There's a new Hoover, and what does this do? Steam? No. What does it do then? How do you know about that? <laughs> what? You've been rooting in my utility room. <laughs> <laughs> so the carcher? Are you talking about the carcher? Mm. Yeah, that thing. Just gag out. Just gag out. I thought that, that was the, that was. I thought they had the, the sprays outside. Well, I've got a cartridge jet wash, but that's the kind. This is like the steam. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously, with with the animals and you know, and kids, you know, I want to be safe. But the thing is, you brought the animals into our life, and that's caused the issue in I the don't first have a fucking place. Cartridge anyway. If I didn't have kids or animals, we didn't have, I have a cartridge. You didn't have a cartridge until until yeah, because the it's dog new. Did that. It's new. It's a new thing. What, the steam clean? Mm-hmm. But I, I'm just saying there's, there's so many hoovers now in this house. I told you. I'm going to try and be dirtier. I'm going to try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clean as a whistle at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Basically a walking hand sanitizer. <laughs> um, okay, audience wines. You Would you have one? a wine? No. This fucking cushion, another wine. <laughs> fucking hell, cushions are rare. Are you, you, so you've not got one? You generally... I'm are you not, not even gonna, you're gonna... I'm write, not even gonna rise to it. No. I'm not gonna rise to you. So we're getting to yours, you, you've got no problems with me whatsoever. Oh, I've got problems. <laughs> <laughs> I've got problems with you, mister. Yeah. But they're not suitable for our audience. Okay. 
All right, well, let's hear someone else's then. I'll think of one as well. I'm sure I'll you will. I, will. I don't doubt that. Oh, how, through the agony. how come husbands always have selective hearing? Tell them for two weeks Hell about yes, going sister. out. sister. Tell them for two weeks about going out and they'll have the kids, etc. Then it comes to the night before and they say, I didn't know you were going out. Oh, yes, you did. I've told you for two weeks. Next day, you get the silent treatment and it's casted up the next two weeks. I, I think, yeah, this happens. But you think I do this to you? It's like when Pete like doesn't tell me about like a golf trip or whatever because he's like, I'll tell you the day before because I'll have a day of grief instead of two weeks of grief. I totally agree with that, mm. to be honest. Sorry, I, I couldn't care. It's like exactly I couldn't same, care less where you went. It's more condensed. Mm -hmm. I couldn't care less where you went, but it's it's only for like planning. You always seem to plan stuff when it's. Yeah, but the, 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 I see it the other way around. You only ever seem to have stuff in the diary when I've got stuff on. You know, like we we've got we're, we're all free, whatever. And then I'll go right. I'm going to go on this kind of golf trip, and you'll be like, "That's the day that I'm doing this." <laughs> Every time, <laughs> missing out on so much. Mm. Well, <laughs> that was a nice little smile. I don't mind though. You are lovely. Do you want to read that one? It's only one sentence. You could probably do it. <laughs> Is Peter allowed to come on my stag do with the lads? Benadorm, April next year. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I'll Benidorm. definitely divorce him by then so he can do what he wants. Yes. Is that just a non? Mm. That's a non. No way. Now, uh, get in touch, whoever you are. I've got I've got a few uh, videos from actually, your dad from Benidorm. <laughs> I'm actually going. I'm actually going on a, a hen do in a couple of days. Oh yeah, you are. Wow. I'm going on a bat my first ever bachelorette party. Magic Mike. Party. Well, I'm not going to reveal it yet because I know my best friend Holly listens to the pod, and it's all top top secret. Mm. Um, so, so are you organising a lot of this? Yeah, along with Laura. So Laura is a lot more efficient than I am. And, you know, she's t taken the reins on the logistics because, mm -hmm. you know, she's just good at that. And she's, you know, she she loves it really. But, you know, we've got some incredible surprises up our sleeve. But I heard you talking to Scott, Ellie's boyfriend, my sister's boyfriend, saying, oh, I'm off that weekend, maybe we should head over to where we're going and kind of like gay crash our bachelorette. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that. Because we don't, do that. we don't go anywhere without each other. Pete might do the odd golf trip like once yeah. or twice a year, but gen generally we don't do anything fun without each other. We, do don't, we? we don't really. We, we, we like to do things together. So if we're either right. doing it together or our group of friends, as you know, Ross, mm -hmm. you're in it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're always together. So it's quite a big deal for me. You know, I'm the biggest wuss on earth. I don't like staying away from home. I have to have, you know, but I'm excited. You know, Holly deserves this happy ending that she's got. And, you know, I can't wait. We've got mm -hmm. our, the our themed outfits and. You can, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Just don't make it every week, eh? Pete's even going mad at me for going to work. Hate it. Don't you? I'll need you here with me, babe. At all times. You make out, it's like me, like, trapping you in. You you just can't bear being away from me. <laughs> True or not? No, I like, listen, I like being around you. That's good, that's fine, isn't it? I like being around you. It's, it's, it's fun. I enjoy it. But I want you to have a good time, genuinely. I want you to, have, I want you to go and have a good time. Good, thanks. We will. You worry about not, that. Not too good a time. <laughs> well, I'm here holding a fort. Viking theme. <laughs> yeah. Hiding a load of... Going to theme. Norway. <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea. Go and find some Vikings. You should have done that. Fucking hell. Why am I? You should have got the water. I know, yeah. Why am I getting involved in this? Don't want anything to do with it. Uh, All right, new one. Uh, you'll new... be glad to know there's no willy straws in sight. Okay. It's a classy affair. <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> there's a new ick unlocked. The oh, gile on a man. Gile. My fiance, she's done the emoji, the throwing up emoji. I don't mind a gile. Uh, Quite Italian. My fiance started wearing one. Is it cheeky to give the ring back? Love the pod, guys. Can't wait to see my fiance's reaction as you read this out. Gile. Pete's got a gile, with an electronic gile mm. with warmer remote control. It's like an electric blanket gile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be all over that. 
It's for those cold days on the sideline of the pitch but doing the football. Um, just warms the warms the bod. I've got socks as well, but I lost the charger. Need more body fat. Well, yeah, I, 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 I've always needed that. But and that Burberry gilet I bought you, you love. Yeah. And you've got a barber one. Yeah. My, my dad's good the for the golf course because you're quite quite free with the swing. And uh, and warm. Up the do you top. like quite like a thin one though, like a dead, like almost like a thin, thin jacket, or do you like the big puffy ones, like a North Face one? I well, like the puffy ones. Mm. I think scouts. Yeah, <laughs> they're better. Like they're, the, the the puffy ones are out dog walking or something like that. My dad loves one, doesn't he? Yeah, he he's does. got loads. So you are you you're saying that the is not not too bad? No, because I think like you know when we go well a million years ago when you used to take me on city breaks, <laughs> we um. Like if you go to like Italy, like all the Italian men, mm. you've got like a Hogan trainer on, a little gilet, a nice cashmere, a pair of sunglasses. Yeah, they do look smart actually. You yeah. know, it's 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 classic, it's smart, it's timeless. Mm. Mm. But is Dave from Blackpool carrying it off the same way <laughs> as Lorenzo from Florence? <laughs> oh, Lorenzo. That's what I I love that name, don't I? <laughs> That's Pete's role play name. <laughs> Lorenzo or Alejandro. Alejandro. <laughs> Lorenzo. Chabella. Chabella. Lorenzo. <laughs> Lorenzo. What a, what a bloody name that is. Fucking pizza delivery guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lorenzo's here with your uh, <laughs> Dr. Papa or whatever it's called. Or is it Mr. Papa? Papa, Papa John's. Papa John. Where do you stand on, on the old role play? I mind? could be your Lorenzo if you want me to be. If you be my buddy. <laughs> I'll come in with the gilet. Yeah. And, and a little else. espresso <laughs> in the morning. Marlboro red in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think Italian's oh. more sexy than Spanish. Yeah, Italian is, is oh, they always look smart. There's a reason why, you know, a lot of the designers are Italian. They, they do look smart. They are the epitome of style. I think they are. Whenever we've been to Italy, I always come back thinking I want to be, I want to dress more Italian. <laughs> Last about, you know. Then the gilet and the fucking ons come on. <laughs> yeah. The on dog dog walking boots and his G, uh, electric gilet. So I so I think that this You G actually went on a dog walk in your pyjama bottoms the other day. Pete, oh, I know. I've thought of a wine for you. Oh, your, um, f for me, or not for me, just a wine in general that all your tracky bottoms have gone missing. Yeah, they have. Who's wearing them? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They've gone missing. It's a joke. Like, I'm, I can't really... They were, they were dog walking trousers. <laughs> I mean, it's from tracksuit bottoms. Have you been them up? No. Oh. Everything's labelled. He, he, he went mental at me in the dressing room. And he's like, there's no tracky bottoms in here. Like, I have labelled all yeah, of his this drawers. This is the problem, this right? The She's organised... The drawers, but like they're organised for herself. Like I, I don't know where anything is now. Ross, they've got stickers on it says sweatpants, sweatshirts, mm -hmm. hoodies, pajama bottoms. Well, maybe that's what thongs. we get. That's why we're getting wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them about them. <laughs> um, and then because he'd put one jumper, so obviously they're all rolled up so neat, colour coordinated. Mm. And because he'd rolled, just put one jumper like flat, like how you'd normally put a, yeah. a jumper in, covered the whole row of tracky bottoms folded up. Let's get to the bottom of this. You you don't mind the gilet. Well, I'm a, I'm a farm girl at heart. Gilets <laughs> aren't too bad. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh. I, uh, you know. I brought some crocky up a farm girl at heart. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the kind of thing I like. I'm an outdoorsy girl. I am an outdoorsy girl. Yeah. Now, whether I like, whether it's an, an, on an Italian city break or a walk in the farm, mm. a gilet is fine for me. It's okay with that. All right, stand corrected. Nice. Right, so the reason behind this podcast, it's in relation to things that men stroke women love but hate to admit, aka guilty pleasures. I think men Go. have... Go. Shoot. Think, Shoot. <laughs> I think men have so much more guilty pleasures than women. Mm. Because I do think, you know, in a relationship, women generally, in a heterosexual relationship, women don't generally like a lot of things that men like. <laughs> I can say that again. Whereas, 
<laughs> Whereas the men do like what the women like. You know, men could be, you know, I'm just talking like basic stuff. Like, you know, you're partial to the odd face. Like I have this, you know, I do this, get this thing at, at mm -hmm. home, Ruby app. Yeah. So Ruby app's amazing. So, you know. Oh, yeah. If you I do. Know what you mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Churchill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so Ruby app. Poor girl's here till midnight because Pete's like, oh, can you squeeze me in for a little, um. <laughs> Betty is. <laughs> Dr. Levy facial. Unreal, you know. I loved it. It was great. So Ruby app is an app mm. that come around to your house and they do all beauty treatments mm -hmm. or, you know, massages, facials, nails, waxing, a anything. That, you know. I had a midnight back sack and crack. Did you? Yeah. The Hollywood. Incredible. <laughs> like a seal down there. <laughs> uh, more like a Richmond sausage. <laughs> Cocktail. Well, cocktail, yeah. <laughs> Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> I didn't really have one, but like, they, I, did, I did have a facial. But, that, but that's a guilty pleasure that you like. Well, very much so. I, I don't, I wouldn't like to admit that, but thanks for bringing it up. You, she was here anyway. I didn't book her, you know, and, and I had I had the facial and it was spectacular. But your skin really takes well to a facial, I yeah. think. Yeah, and, I, and I, I radiate now. You do? I, I'm happy with it. I was happy with it. Yeah. What? But I also love that face gym we went to. Yeah, face gym as well. That's amazing. Mm. I think we've talked about this before, but you know, they, they massage your face and what did she say? It's like 50 odd or 200 muscles in your face. But when you have a massage, you don't massage 50 or face. 200. <laughs> Between that. Um, but there's lots of muscles in your face basically, but you don't, you don't get that massaged. Mm. So that's a, that's a guilty pleasure. But you, yeah. but you're, you also like watching you know, tripe on TV that I like watching. Pretend that you don't. Guil guilty pleasure-wise. Well, guilty pleasure-wise, like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, treats and things like that. I love a packet of crisps. And I'm partial. That's not guilty pleasure. No, because well, everyone likes, everyone would say they like crisps, surely. Oh, really? Guilty. Oh, it's something guilty, you like something that you'd be a bit, like, embarrassed to. Sorry, I'm not up to date with the TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> like, picking your nose and eating it. Mm. Oh, really? Big guilty pleasure. Do you? Yeah. Do you pick your nose and eat sometimes. it? Sometimes. Do you sometimes <laughs> eat it? <laughs> I never did the one that missed it on this part. You know, when I, I've seen someone do that when I was in the car next to them, they're like in a traffic jam. Yeah. And something just come over me and I just start to beep at me horn and go into that. What, you were <laughs> through just, the window? You were telling him. It was disgusting. Oh, I was in his own space. Just... Picking your nose and eating yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 if my kids, would, you'd tell them, but you can't, you can't pick someone, like pull someone else up for it, can you? Yes, 100%. What do you think? What's my guilty pleasure, would you say? Uh, what's something that you you wouldn't want people to know that you like? Well, it's not what people wouldn't. <laughs> kind of is, yeah. Or that you wouldn't like to admit. Something a bit cringy. <clears throat> so it'd be my music taste, isn't it? Well, you're gangster rap that you listen to. <laughs> I love every genre, to be honest. Yeah, but you are a big fan of the kind of nineties R and B flavors. Mm. I love that. I love Simply Red. You know, people get. You know, people are disgusted when I say that. I think he's simply red. Get a hard time, but I love simply red. I think you he's, two he's, and simply red get a hard time. Mm. You two don't get. You do. how can anyone say anything bad about you two? You two get a, get a rough ride. I think you two, not so much Bono gets a tough time, don't he? Because but it's just Bono, jealousy. It's jealousy. And the sunglasses. Absolute ledge, Bono. <laughs> and the sunglasses, <laughs> but it was a lot of I think kind of preaching at some state one stage mm. as well. Yeah, but you, you, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know, you're given a platform and people, you know, want you to use that to kind of raise... We said that in the show, in the one-man show we went to in Naples. Yeah, but pe people, you know, are given this platform and, and are expected to use that to, to raise issues and create awareness and then... And then they get beaten When they with do, you get, you get beaten it. with it. Just fuck them. <laughs> I say. <laughs> okay. Don't slag Bono off either, by the way. Would you say Genie Queen were a guilty Bono. pleasure of yours, Peter? Oh, a huge guilty pleasure of mine. Um, for anyone who doesn't know who Genie Queen are, uh, they were Abby's first no, band. No, no, no. <laughs> she is very, George very... Um, she's very embarrassed about, and I don't know why. I'm not embarrassed about it. I don't want to talk about that on the, on the But why, So why don't you want to talk about it? That's what I'm going to say. Because I don't want to raise awareness of it. Okay, you I'm don't, not using my platform. <laughs> you don't want to... You don't want to talk about it. 
but I don't. Yeah, it's we're, a guilty pleasure. We're talking guilty pleasures, yeah. and my guilty pleasure is going back and listening to the Union Queen because they are they're a phenomenal band, and um, the, the one of the singers in particular um, <laughs> is gorgeous and uh, has an amazing voice, and people haven't heard that enough. I've got no idea what you're talking about. That's my guilty pleasure. I guilty agree. pleasure. Cultural What's phenomenon. your guilty pleasure, Russ? Oh, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon people say that? They reckon they say, oh, you know, I, I thought, that, you know, they were both twats, but it's like their guilty pleasure. No, I, I, th I think they didn't think <laughs> we were ta twats until they listened to this. <laughs> I think it was the other way around. Yeah, I've heard someone, I've, a lot of people have come over to me and said your podcast is, is my guilty pleasure. Mm. I think it's people that probably probably thought that they didn't, they weren't having us, and then they might actually like it. And then in their circle of friends, they probably would say... Some of our friends, they were like super duper, super duper duper intelligent with the most high powered jobs and well-respected people, like listen to our podcast, you know, that would be a guilty pleasure to them because they couldn't possibly admit that they listened to this struggle. Yeah, we're so if we're talking about like beaver emojis and things like that, I think there there are people that like that I know that that listen to this that are probably very different or different circles or different Humor. life to us, but listen, and I've met quite a few, and it's it's always really nice kind of hearing that they listen because you're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that, mm. which is which is good. But sometimes I think people just want to listen to a little bit of light-hearted light fun. Hearted. Light -hearted fun. Definitely. Don't you? Agreed. But I, I think I try and make, I try and do that as much as possible. Which? Just everything light-hearted. You know what I mean? It's like, there are so many kind of serious topics in the world and, you know, there's so much, so many problems and it can but get on top of you. Even if you just turn the telly on, it can get on top of you. Yeah. So sometimes if just getting away from it, and like, I think that's Escapism. what this podcast is. You know, we're not we're not solving problems worldwide here, are we? But we're literally we... chatting, having a laugh, and I think people resonate yeah, but, with it. You know, laughing out loud is a solution to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a tonic, and it definitely helps laughter. And you know, belly laughing. How good is belly laughing? Oh, I love it. It's the best, isn't it? Favorite thing to do. It's my favorite thing. Well, the thing is, if you're laughing, you're you're the opposite of depressed, right? So, <laughs> you know, and if you are depressed, if you manage to break out of that with a laugh, you're gonna it's gonna go some way to helping you get out of the problem you're in. So, and it's a welcome distraction, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's, you know, if people, you know, sometimes it's hard for people to escape their problems and what's going on. And, but if you can have like, you know, an hour of fun, fun fun packed hour. It's a fun packed hour, yeah. <laughs> Certainly is. Any other guilty pleasures? TV. What? 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 Like what about a TV? I like a place in the place in the sun, home or away. Yeah, you do love that, don't you? I love it. I don't mind it either. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. It. Did you tell you what my dad said to me? No. And I was like, Dad, I've got you. I've got this new show coming out on ITV, this interior show. And he was like, Oh, that's fab. That he said you should get yourself on that Homes Under the Hammer <laughs> with Dion. <laughs> Dion. I was like, no, it's a different thing, Dad. Yeah. He's like sitting in that auction, watching them buy it. A bargain hunt, isn't it? Yeah. No. Bargain hunt's the one. Yeah, we're doing the different. Homes under the hammer. Oh, sorry. It's called yeah. Homes under the hammer, as in auction hammer. Yeah. So what's the one with Dion then? Homes, That's homes under, under the hammer. The hammer. Bargain hunt is where they go around like antique stores yeah, yeah. and then they try and get something for cheap and then they go to an auction and then try and flog it for more. Homes under the hammer is people, they follow someone's journey from the auction house, bidding on a house to doing it up to potentially renting it out or selling it. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, that's it, okay. But Place in the Sun's great. Mm. Yeah. My oh. mum loves that um, like Christmas movie channel. <laughs> Seen that on Sky? No, no. It's just like Christmas rom-coms and they're on like throughout the May, June, July, August. <laughs> She always just watches them, doesn't she? Mm, she does love she them. She absolutely loves when them. When she was with us for a while, she, they were just always on. <laughs> I think it was, wasn't it called 24 Hour Movies or something like that? <laughs> so the, like 24 Hour Movies. It's like a crisp, it's like such a cheesy channel. Mm. Yeah, it is. Mm. Um, I like The Wheel. You love The Wheel? I, I'm fat, I like, it's on, was it usually on a Saturday night? Or the like Wheel. That. I never know when it's on, but I just, I just the see wheel. it. The as... Wheel. Anything but, with Michael McIntyre is great, though, isn't it? 
Yeah. yeah. Don't you think? Mm. Okay, so what about um, Vin Diesel? He's one of your guilty pleasures we've spoken about quite often. No, he absolutely isn't. <laughs> what the hell? You, you, you're the one that brought, you no, like I, that Vin Diesel type. No, uh, you said that. No, I, I said girls like in a bad boy. I'm like, no, that's totally, you know, not my thing. I would prefer the nice guy any day of the well, week. Well, what, what would you say to the people that say nice guys finish last in business, in well, success? It's it's not a sprint. It's a race. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a marathon. It's, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. There we go. Is what I hey. is what I would say Do you to know that. What? They're going to put that on your uh, on your tombstone. <laughs> it's not stop? a sprint. It's a race. <laughs> Can we stop talking about me dying, please? It doesn't do anything for my health anxiety. Ah. My God. Do you know that's going to follow you around that? You said Abby something Clans else. It's not a sprint, it's, it's a, a race. race. Abby Clancy. 2023. <laughs> Shut up. We can cut. We can edit Shut that up. out. We can't. No way. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't. No, I, I, you know, the good guy finishes last. You could interpret that in, in a different way. There's also treat people like the you know as how you'd want to be treated yourself like on the way up because you meet them on the way down that kind of thing and that it it, it obviously help you back up but if you stood on them on the way up they're not going to help. you. I think that's them. very imp a very important thing. I but I, don't, listen, but I don't think you should I always, be nice to people just so you get get things. You should just be nice anyway. Well, no, that's what I mean. You just got to be a good person. That's what I'm saying because. You should be a good person. Some, sometimes general. I end up being a bad person for being a good person. Do you know what I mean? No. Like I always get myself into trouble, like, you know, like maybe sticking up for people and then causing drama. And then I'm in trouble. I think drama follows you around. <laughs> and I, I think as women in general, they, they love a bit of drama. I think they make things probably worse. Some men, some men's guilty pleasures is drama, like yeah, Scott. I've noticed people like that. Scott. He, he is a proper drama whore. I don't, <laughs> why, I don't understand why people like drama. What's going on with that? No, like Scott will say, have you heard this? She said this, you know. He <laughs> loves getting involved in girls' drama. <laughs> loves it. Absolutely oh, loves it. I can't feel about anything worse. I haven't clocked up, but I've got to know. You've got to get on it. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, when people come over and they're so excited to tell you something bitchy. Yeah. Like, oh, what, yeah. Like, it's, I don't, I just, do not understand I don't it. get it. Come over and go, see what she said. She what she said over there. I hate that. <laughs> oh, oh my God, you'll never guess what she said. And you're like, and it's going to hurt the person and she's grassing someone up. Yeah. Mm. But they love it. What is that all about? I don't, I don't like to bitch at all in general and that's the honest truth, but I, I do bitch to you. Because you're safe. <laughs> I'm, you know I'm mean? a sponge yeah. of bitchiness. You're a bitch sponge. Because well, you know a bitch sponge. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be one of those. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd rather be a bitch. But you um <laughs> you but you have told me off before for, for bitching. But like I think sometimes like when you'll say something and bitchy about and then I say and I say no, then that does you do take that on board. Yeah, but you wouldn't class me as a bitchy person generally. No. Not at all. But I, I'm talking about bitching about the painters, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, you know, guilty pleasures. I didn't really quite understand the remit, but I think it's because I'm over 40. Mm. Um, well, I'm not. That's why I really understood it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for educating me on the, the, the TikTok trend. You know, can I just it's say? guilty pleasures. I was talking about, like, planning my 40th. I can't wait to plan your 40th. I can't wait. Oh, well, what I should have said there is I can't wait to get your fortieth wrong. <laughs> you won't get it wrong, Pete, because I'll tell you exactly what I want. What do you want? I want Simply Red. Oh, shut your mouth. That's it. <laughs> you can't just get Simply Red. You can. You can't. It's not possible. Haven't they broken up? Well, he's on tour. Farewell tour, though. No, Pete, it's so funny because it come up on my, on my phone. It was like Simply Red on tour. And I was like, Pete, it's on Monday. Pete's phoning up trying to get a box for us to go and see Simply Red. And it was... 2025. 20 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I managed to get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two years away. All right, let's do some agony abs, all right? Uh, hi, P Abby, Peter, and Ross. All right, well, Ross has got a mention there. Um, don't continue with that, mm. if you don't mind, listeners. He's nothing to us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Anyway, I've got a, re a question regarding cosmetic surgery. Ooh. I've had a few tweaks over the years. Nose job, liposuction. Do not recommend because it fucking hurts. A few tweaks. Fillers and Botox, etc. I don't necessarily look like I've had any work done apart from once when I went too hard on the Botox. That was ropey. So it's not like I'm walking around looking like a piece of plastic. But as subtle as the tweaks were, it made me feel much better about some horrible insecurities from bullying. My schnoz was enormous in my youth and improvements from weight loss. I'd say now I'm an average level of attractiveness rather than a big fat troll under the bridge. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I feel better for it and I'm markedly more confident after the surgeries too. Now, here's the dilemma. I found myself single for the first time in eight years. It's a grim world out there. Been seeing a guy for a while now and things are going well. However, the other day he was saying to me he'd never ever be attracted to a girl who's had surgery or fillers because it's gross and people who alter themselves are vain and should be happy with what they've got. He this sounds like a right dick. This took me slightly aback because he doesn't know about my tweaks but he was also so strongly against it. I wasn't sure how to react. I did say to him that it's not usually about being vain. It's more about people feeling better about themselves. And he, doubt, he doubled down saying it's a mental illness and actually quite sad, gross, and always really obvious when people have fucked around with themselves. Oh, God. Quote, he sounds horrible, doesn't he? I didn't fess up, but I now weirdly feel guilty and a bit blur. Obviously, I don't think things are going to go be going much further with that narrow-minded pee head, but I now feel like a fraud. How do I broach the subject with potential partners, or does uh, one just keep these secrets to the grave? Number one, get rid of him because he sounds disgusting. And number two, be kind to yourself. And... Number three, it's your body. You can do whatever you want and you don't have to explain to anyone if it's something, you know. So what if you don't want to have a wrinkle? So what if you, you know, if you want a, a tweak here and there? If you, she feels you can better do, for herself. Yeah, you can, you can do what you want and it's, it's definitely, a <clears throat> for some people, definitely a way of making them feel more confident about themselves. And I think that should be praised. Obviously, you know, Having surgery is is a is is a, a big thing, and you know having unnecessary operations is you know not always the right answer. But if something makes you feel better and more confident as a person, you shouldn't have to mm. explain that to anybody. And I also think you know carrying this burden of oh it's a secret, it's not. There's so many people out there who've had loads of stuff done that no one knows or no one would question. But you know you feel good like. Who cares? Mm. If, yeah, listen, if you're going to do it, you need to get the right advice, obviously. Um, and if, especially if you're suffering. Um, and that you can. Look. Some people are like traumatised from like bullying when they're younger. Like if they've had like, you know, over their appearance, their nose, their weight, whatever. And, you know, if that's one mechanism, if having a little tweak here and there is a mechanism for them to, you know, kind of overcome that, then why not? Mm. Obviously... Definitely, as you say, do your research and, you know, because it can be dangerous. You don't want to do any, like, botch jobs, but it's no one's business. Yeah, and also, I don't think he he sounds, you know, but that's it. I suppose that's his point of view. And he doesn't know that she's had it, so, um, so he doesn't know much about it then, does he? Sounds like he's projecting, I think. It does sound like he's projecting. And also... I think you have to be careful about things that that you say because you know she could just turn around and say, "Well, you know, I've I've had my whole body done," and then what would he say then? Mm, maybe she should say that. See what he says to that. Because she's also proven wrong. Because he's like, you can always tell. Can always I don't. Tell, I'd yeah. never be attracted to anyone like that. And you go, well, obviously we've been seeing each other. Well, he didn't seem to be too bothered last night. Do you uh, know what I mean? Exactly. Mic drop. See you later. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But again, you know, get the right advice. I mean, I'm, I, I'm lucky. I've, I'm perfection. I've never needed it, but um, you've got three nose jobs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, yeah. All right. Can I just say they're not cosmetic ones? <laughs> no, they won't. Cosmetic. He's had his nose broken three it's times. Still, it's still not great. <clears throat> what were your thoughts on that, Ross? Because she wanted your opinion. Oh yeah, I give mine. I said I think he's projecting. I think that she should have probably told him and said, "Actually, I think you're completely wrong. You've been with me for the past whatever few months." And you hasn't bothered you so far. And you're a complete jerk. Shut the door on your way out. Yeah. She called him a pea brain. Pea brain. He does sound narrow-minded. 
Silly twat. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ab and Pete. I love Silly the pod. Twat. <laughs> I love the pod, and I'm currently suffering a moral dilemma in how to deal with my neighbour's kid. Ugh. Kids. <clears throat> Other people's kids. Ugh. The worst kind. <laughs> Joke it. Since you two sound like good parents, I thought you might be able to help. I live in a cul-de-sac on a ground floor flat with a patio area. Looking out on the communal parking slash road area, it's nice and it sounds, some of the people near me have kids who play in this area. I have no problem with this whatsoever and as the kids are nice, it causes me no issues at all. However, there's one little lad, no older than seven, who has taken an interest in me when I'm outside on the patio, either when I'm having a coffee at lunch, having a cigarette, watching stuff on my phone. He walks over and either sits on a chair or nestles next to me and continues to ask questions, peer through my doors. I have to stop whatever I'm doing, take off my headphones, stub out the cig and engage in conversation just when I want to chill out and be by myself. As the kids are back at school, I now don't go outside into the patio from three till eight so I can avoid this awkward and frankly uncomfortable Ooh. encounter. I've even found myself on occasions reenacting Mickey, Flanagus, Mickey Flanagan's famous peeping sketch, making sure the coast is clear before I can come outside and relax for 20 minutes on my own patio. This is also proven ineffective as he spots me from what I presume his bedroom window and <laughs> oh continues to God. shout hello and then come out of his house to talk to me. I feel genuinely uncomfortable during the combos as I've only I've, as I've only been in my place for a few months. So it would be very strange befriending a seven year old, considering I'm a twenty eight year old single a twenty eight year old single bloke with no kids of my own. He's nice and polite young lad, so am, am I being overdramatic or do I just need to get over it? Or can oh you understand God. where I'm coming from? If so, how do I get to stop and coming over? Thanks, Henry from Berkshire. Oh, I love that message. I think it's cute. I love that message. That is so funny. It is cute, but you know, you've got to be careful. You know? I, I also definitely understand his point of view. Like, sometimes you just want to chill and come out and just don't talk to anyone. We want to do that with our own kids. Yeah, Never mind yeah. the neighbours. Every time we go outside for a glass of wine, put them to bed, go and sit on the patio, have a nice glass of wine. They come down, we're like, will you just get away from us? <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if it's someone know, else's okay. kid though? But you're not, you're not as polite to your own. You can be more. I oh, know. You we, have to be more dip. Of course you do, because. But kids love me, don't they? And like, but I, I do, I do like kids. No, but like, I, I love it. I also love this kid. He's obviously, he's obviously like, Cute. just wants to come and chat. Yeah, but to be fair though, I, I can, you know, I can see why he's worried. As he's saying, he's a twenty-eight-year-old lad living on his own. You have to be careful with yeah. people with kids, don't you? you like are, strangers. Got, I and, think he's probably got to go and speak to the. You know, I'm just like. I, Sometimes I just want to relax, you know what I mean? You can't tell the kid to just piss off. <laughs> yeah. The kid comes down, hi, piss off now. <laughs> God's sake. Trying to chill him back. Get some friends your own age. <laughs> yeah. He runs in crying. Yeah. I mean, like, the poor kid, he yeah, just wants who, to play. Who did Jack used to make a beeline for? Jack loves Scott. Oh, Jack, Scott. He loves Scott, did he? Like our, our baby Jack, like from as soon as my sister got with a boyfriend, just loved Scott. Mm. And sometimes, sometimes kids, kids just take a shine. To, like, they do. Do you remember that kid who said to me, I broke my nose and uh, it, I had it fixed. So when she saw me the first time, it was broken and it was bad. And then I had it fixed, but she just remembered like it being, so she remembered me as the, the nose guy. Yeah. And uh, she came in, she was probably, what, about five? She just kept, she just kept going, big <laughs> nose. <laughs> like that, right? And then obviously everyone laughed, right? Everyone. <laughs> And uh, so then, obviously, when you get the reaction of the, the laughter, she keeps saying it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, people laughed again, and then people laughed again, and she kept going, and it was big nose, big nose, big nose, and kept going, oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> so I was under my breath, well, you just fuck off. <laughs> it is, I've, I've, got, I've, I've got friends who just wouldn't tolerate that, you know, having like kids come around, like some people just be like, go away. Mm. Go back Ruthless. Home. Yeah. I don't get that. I couldn't do that. I kid come up to me. I'm always, you got to be, I don't know. You got to be nice to kids, don't mm. you? I think. I've only been mean to someone else's kid once. Some kids are twats. Some kids are get twats. away from it. Yeah. They grow up into big twats. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Do you remember when the kid was feeding yeah. that goat a plastic bag in the farm? Yeah. And had, I got the kid and was like, them. do you want me to feed you a plastic bag? That's <laughs> so cruel. And the kid was like that. And then the mum come over and was like, everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just speaking to your lovely little child. <laughs> and she got caught. But I was so annoyed. Just thought, you know, 
a kid should know that animals can't eat plastic bags. Mm. I think that's sick to you. Yeah. Mm. But uh, how, how does he deal with this situation? Does he go? I think he goes over to the parents and says, you know, he comes over to, to see me like all the time. And I'll be honest with you, like when I get home from work, I just want to chill out a little bit. You know, maybe he could just go and speak to the mum and say, you know, your little boy just lo loves to come and hang out with me. You know, and maybe get to know his mum and dad a bit. But I think he should maybe tell maybe the mum and dad that he's not. I All think right. speak. To, I think you should leave it as just go over, speak to the parents, explain your situation. You need some alone time as well. Leave it or you could just get mm. a water gun. So every time you come around, just squirt him. Yeah. Mm. I love the, the thought of him just, just peeking. Mm. Is that little runt there or not? <laughs> <laughs> little runt. <laughs> Okay, next one. Next one. Uh, all right. Oh, bit of a long one. It's anonymous. Um, hey, Abby and Pete. I actually don't have a complaint about my husband. World wow. said no one ever. <laughs> we, we have an amazing relationship and a beautiful IVF miracle baby together. Oh. He and I are actually very good at talking about our issues and getting to the bottom of things, probably because I'm brash and he's harmless. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Seeing as you both have worked with a plethora of different types of people, you may be able to help me in a, in a work situation. I am an operations manager at a company in America that I will not name. I was brought into the position from outside the company after the person in my position of 30 years stepped back. I have an employee that is driving me batshit crazy. I have no idea what she does here, what her job title is, and most of the time I have no idea what she's doing during the time in the office. I've asked HR, that. I've asked HR what her job is. They don't know. I asked the owner what her job is. He doesn't know. And I even sat down to ask her what her job duties entailed when I started. Her response, the little things. <laughs> when I asked her for a further explanation, I got just small jobs that come in. I spend most of my time having really important conversations with her, like a paintbrush is not a single-use item. I want to fire her. She's useless. However, the owner is worried about a backlash because she's related to the manager I just replaced. Here's the biggest issue I have with this. She never shuts the fuck up. I'm convinced that she narrates every single move to convince me that she's actually doing something. You know when in reality, she's typing and deleting words on a computer just to make it sound like she's Clicking. writing an email. Do you know what? She is a fully grown woman with children in her 30s and she can't send an email without saying, okay, just need to send this little email. <laughs> I know these people. How do I professionally I tell this, this woman person. to shut the fuck up uh, before I use our industrial staplers to staple her lips together. <laughs> I know this woman is not cultured enough to even heard of your podcast, let alone understand your accents if she had heard it. But just in case someone at my company does have accents? a bit of culture, your favourite Spaniard, Anonymous. <laughs> One thing I have learned in my life, mm. when most, most people that I have encountered who are going, right, I can do this, I can do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, don't do anything. All fart, no shit. <laughs> what a lovely way to put it. <laughs> I, I can't stand it. I no, it's like, stand it's, it. Like, it's like the pit, they have to say, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Like, I remember, you know, one person who remained nameless saying things like, uh, oh, I've got, because I've got to get dressed, I've got to clean my teeth, and then I've got to uh, walk the I've got, dog. I've got to make my bed. And, and like, you go, like, no, those are all things that you do anyway, and then you do what you need to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's proactive people and then there's people that shit out their way through life. And but then it's like a, a friend of ours has got a, a PA who they've had for 15 years. It was absolutely shocking at her job, but he can't fire her because... He likes her. Because he likes her, but she's... Uh, Does absolutely nothing. Just, like, he's had to get, like, another PA to <laughs> rectify all their mistakes. <laughs> I, I knew someone... And he, he used to say he had a travel agent. He said he's the worst fucking travel agent you've ever seen. <laughs> Gets things wrong all the time. But I've, he's been with him for 30 years and he's like a family friend. Mm. Just can't, can't sack him. <laughs> so he, try, he he like gives him kind of weird jobs like when his son wants to go away or something, he like books through him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he fucks up his trip instead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's that kind of oh. know-it-all thing. If, like if you ask someone to do it and it's like, you know, can you do that? And then, oh, I was just about to do that. Mm. Oh, I've already said that. I've already done that. It's just when people so let you know what they're doing, rather than just working, people let you know. I'm just doing this email here. Just send the fucking email. Yeah, no, I mean, I, we don't need to know the information that you're gonna send it. But I remember getting um, semi-permanent eyelashes done once, and you know, I booked two hours with the girl, and she spoke 
for the first hour about how she used these special lashes, how she's won all these awards, how she's, you know, paved the way for this, this and this. They were the worst fucking eyelashes I've ever had in my entire life. Really? And I just all thought... All talk? Yeah. I know I sound harsh, but I, I can't be bothered with that. Mm. Just done this, I've just done that. Da, 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 da. Just, just it's it's it, i do think it's a it's kind of like a skill not everyone has it and it's hard to, to have but like the kind of get up and go people that don't mention it and get it done they're the people you want to be not the people that mention it and never get around to doing it just had to get out i just had to undo my seat belt climb out the car shut the car door <laughs> because you could do it all day couldn't you yeah just had to record my cod podcast and then i've got to open that door i've got to shut it again i've got to go in there i've got to stroke the dog then feed the dog and then i've got to go in there and make a cup of tea and then i've got to probably I've only got 15 minutes there till i've got to pick the kids up and i've got to get in the car and i've got to turn the engine on and then i've got to drive down the road and then i've got to actually pick the kids up whereas you just go i've got to pick the kids up in a half hour and then all that stuff just happens but you can make yourself sound really busy yeah when you're not agreed Okay, so I thought that was a good part. I yeah, enjoyed that. You know, I'm slightly, you know, you didn't give me much guilty pleasures. I, I didn't really understand the concept, if I'm honest. Pot noodles, he said. Okay, pot noodle. I do like a pot noodle. P really Pinstripe like. skirts. Yeah, pencil skirts and pot noodles. <laughs> no, I thought that was fun. More. I thought that was fun. That, and, you know, fun. it's an exciting week for us. You know, our book's out this week. My interior shows out this week. Get off that. That's um, antique Sanufu bed. That's in the Palace of Versailles. That is a, a Sanufu bed. Did, 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 did we rob Versailles? <laughs> I just took a big van down to Versailles. <laughs> broke in. You the lads from Crocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because you've just got no, no one in this house has got any respect for my... Do you know that's an ancient Fanu Sanufu bed? Wow, that looks quite comfortable. It is comfortable. Yeah. It's 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 like perfect for your body. Wow, it is, isn't it? Yeah. You're supposed to line it like that. Yeah, it's a bed, Pete. So a Sanufu bed, it's, you know, it's from the Ivory Coast. It's made out of... It's carved out of a single piece of wood and it's where, you know, the, the, there's a kind of triangular pillow shape at the top and it's used as a day bed. But I just think that beautiful no in all that's, honor, that's actually quite interesting kind of looks like a giant skateboard without the wheels mm. with a little headrest yeah do you know what like we've done this podcast you know countless times now and i'm learning new things about this room mm. the science and ivory coast I can't wait surrounded get, by i can't wait till we get started on that chest of drawers next week <laughs> Talk me know, through that how chest. nice is that <laughs> where's that from it's from arding lie whoa, whoa, whoa don't spoil Which it don't spoil it all right. Okay. Save that for next week. I'll babe. save it for next week because if anyone else is interested in my boring story. No, no, no. It's actually uh, a lot more interesting than I thought. No, so we, we have got an exciting week this week. Our book's out. My interior show's out. Okay. So I'm actually quite, I feel on. really nervous about it. No, you should be fine. You, no, because you, I haven't great. done like TV for so many years. And I had, you know, the kids and I've been at home a lot. And, you know, apart from this podcast, you know, getting back on the air. Uh, Back on the old wagon, getting getting mm. back on the old silver screen. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Wow, oh I'm joking. I'm joking. But I am absolutely. What's this show going to be called? What's it called? It's called Abby Clancy's Celebrity Homes, and I'm actually petrified of it. Like right. I've loved it. It's inc I think it's an amazing show, but I just feel kind of, you know, under pressure. Okay, so Abby Clancy, Clancy's Celebrity Homes and the book out mm. in the same week. What a slut. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>